While troops were advancing within Russia, NATO allies responded with carefully worded statements, reinforcing their commitments to Ukraine. This comes just a few weeks before NATO's summit in Vilnius, uh, Lithuania. There, Ukraine is calling for commitments on its pathway to joining the alliance. The Natalia Galibarenko is Ukraine's ambassador to NATO in Brussels. In her first Canadian interview, I asked her about those membership expectations and the political message her country hopes to receive. We spoke on Friday. Ambassador Galibarenko, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Good afternoon. My pleasure. This week, NATO Secretary General uh, Jan Stoltenberg repeated that Ukraine will not receive a formal invitation to join the alliance next month. What kinds of commitments is Ukraine hoping to get from NATO, if not that? If not about, uh, you know, actual membership, but we still believe that it is possible in Vilnius to invite Ukraine to join NATO. So our position is that if the actual membership is not possible during the active phase of war going on in Ukraine. So, but it doesn't actually limit the possibilities to invite Ukraine, for example, when conditions allow or when the war will be over. So I still believe that there is, you know, a space for us to right. find out some kind of formula. Um, do, do you think that that is the, the primary issue, is that the, the war continues and, and NATO does not want to accept a membership while the conflict goes on? No, we are trying uh, not only to focus on the issue of invitation or the membership. So our idea is to progress like in practical terms and also on the political side. In practical terms, actually, I can say that uh, we are going forward with together with NATO allies quite on a good tempo. So uh, it would be uh, the new defense transition plan for Ukraine, like a multi-annual program for interoperability and support for the armed forces. Right. It would be also upgrade of political relations coming from commission to council. But still, uh, on the political side, as, as I said, this issue of invitation and membership. Could, could you speak more about that issue of NATO-Ukraine Commission becoming the NATO-Ukraine Council? What, what would that practically change for, for you and, and for uh, Ukraine? Uh, the idea behind uh, establishing the Council instead of the Commission is the idea that uh, Ukraine would be participating in certain decision-making of the alliance, in, for example, also participation in drafting the documents which are of their common, uh, common origin. And even at the table, like, you know, we will be sitting right. together, not in 31 plus 1 Ukraine, right. but we will be sitting together at the 32, and I also hope with Sweden it would be 34, 33, sorry. <laughs> Uh, th there has been, uh, as, as you well know, there's been, there's been growing momentum and certainly uh, growing public demands for, for Ukraine to be brought into NATO, be brought closer to NATO. Why do you think that, that there has been that shift? Is it, is it solely because of the war, or do you think it is because of what Ukraine has shown it is able to do uh, and, and demonstrate in order to join the alliance? I think, you know, both that you mentioned are yeah. the right reason. And I would also like to maybe to uh, emphasize the thing that, at, that during these two years and how we are confronting Russians on the battlefield, we showed that we can be really an asset for the alliance. So we are not a burden. We can really contribute to the security of the alliance. And actually, on the eastern flank, in that case, the alliance will be having a major, you know, enormous creative and very high motivated Ukrainian army. As you know, there are countries that have expressed more reluctance. Uh, Germany is one, and the United States is obviously another. President Biden has said he is not in favor of any shortcuts. I wonder what reassurances you've received there in Brussels um, about the U.S.'s position and how willing they are, or, or what they're willing to do to try and get you to a space where they would be comfortable with you joining NATO. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm absolutely aware of um, positions of, of many delegations, and including the United States. And it's, you know, it's really difficult to challenge because they are not saying that they are against our membership. They are just saying that first should come the victory and that they are ready to contribute to that. And only after the victory, we can discuss uh, the political perspectives uh, of Ukraine. However, again, as I mentioned, we can do certain steps in Vilnius 
towards the membership, not yeah. the actual one, but at least the invitation. And also the good sign is that also the United States already suggested to us uh, to start discussion how then they will be in the long run together with NATO supporting our armed forces. And this is important even after the war that we will be still cooperating uh, yeah. more on reforming, strengthening the armed forces of Ukraine. Do, do you think, though, that that, that that position from the United States is because they do not want to see, for instance, American soldiers involved on the ground in Ukraine fighting Russians? I think our American partners are serious on, on, on all merits concerning NATO and their future engagement, because they do understand that it will be also for them a bunch of commitments on their side. Yeah. And uh, I mean, this, this, this is good for us. We also do understand that, you know, joining NATO, it's not a symbolic thing. Yes. And uh, empowering Article 5 is uh, actually a very big task and challenge, especially for the United States. But again, we would like to be foreseen not as a burden. We can show that we are an asset. President Zelensky has said he will not attend uh, the summit in, in Vilnius if, if he doesn't get a really clear sign that something is going to happen there, as you say, at least um, an invitation of some kind to come. Do you, do you think that he will be able to attend? Do you think that you will get to that space? I, I can say that I do hope that, that he will come, and we as a diplomats, we are trying to do our best in order like, you know, to prepare the ground for him to come and to see a really a good package on the table. The, the Kremlin has repeatedly said that preventing Ukraine from joining NATO has been one of the goals of its invasion. So if, if there is some sort of invitation, even if it is not a formal membership at this stage, what do you think that does to Russia's view of this conflict, and how important might that be? No, I always uh, consider it this uh, threat of Russians and pretext that they start an invasion into Ukraine because of our uh, approachment with NATO is absolutely false and, uh, and falsified. Uh, so without even perspective of NATO membership, they started the aggression. Yeah. And believe me, we are saying to our partners here, so Russia has escalated so far, the situation is so high, even with the destruction of the Kahovka Dam, that I don't see any limits for them. And right. definitely, uh, invitation to NATO membership is not something that will infuriate. I believe that our counteroffensive on the opposite is something that they, you know, can actually create the ground for them to be really even more aggressive and barbaric. Well, let, let me end on the counteroffensive, if I can, Ambassador. Are, are you confident that Ukraine has the supplies that it needs right now to continue with that counteroffensive, win it? Um, and are there other requirements, other things that you need from NATO partners? No, the, I, the problem of deliveries, and uh, it is still that we are confronting a lot, is the, not the deliveries itself, but the sustainability. Right. So, in order to proceed uh, with counteroffensive and to be really effective in liberating our territories, we need sustainability of deliveries. We also need a strategy of how to repair and then fastly to go back with our equipment and weapon to, to, to the battlefield. So, and also the sustainable delivery of ammunition. Right. Because we have, for just imagine, 600 different Western systems operating on the battlefield. You need repair, you need service, you need ammunition. So this is something that this is a challenge. And I'm happy that last Rammstein also showed that our Western allies, they do understand that, and they will be working on that. Ambassador, thank you so much for your time. Nice to, uh, nice to speak with you. My pleasure. Thank you.